So it's pretty crazy to think that 25 years ago today, the original Final Fantasy VII released here in North America, a game that would go on to influence all of gaming and that would change the lives of millions and millions of people, uh, over 13 million people to be exact, <laughs> based on how many copies the original game has sold since its release. It's pretty astonishing to see a game sell 13 million copies and a good chunk of that number came back when the game released. So I thought it would be kind of cool to make a video just kind of reminiscing about how I was introduced to the franchise and how much it means to me because this is a, a not just a series, but seven in particular was a game that that just introduced so many people to a new genre of gaming and it showed people what games could be and how deep they could be and how far they could actually go. So I remember I was, I believe, seven years old when I first played this game. Oddly enough, my sister is the one who bought it because one of her friends at the time was just boasting about this game that she was playing called Final Fantasy VII and how amazing it was and how she had never played anything like it. And funny enough, uh, her selling point to my sister <laughs> was actually that the main character Cloud would have to, at one point in time, dress up as a girl so he could infiltrate a building to save one of his party members. And I guess that was enough for my sister <laughs> at the time to be like, oh, I'll check it out. So I remember my sister and my mom and I, we went to our local electronics store at the time called Media Play, which unfortunately is no longer around. Once the, the best buys of the world started to pop up, the homegrown shops like like media play would eventually just kind of fade away because they just could not compete, unfortunately. So I remember going to the gaming section. We saw the game. My sister grabbed it because my mom let us get it. And uh, we took it home and we played it. And you have to keep in mind, my sister and I, we had played a couple of PlayStation games before then, Tekken 2, Crash Bandicoot. It's nothing too crazy or out there, but we were mostly coming off of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis era where games were really short uh, and they didn't always have a lot of depth to them. So we're used to playing games that are like five five or six levels jump on someone's head or you just side scroll and beat up some people and that was it. So we take Final Fantasy VII home and there's three discs, which we've never seen before and we don't know how long each disc is. And my sister puts the game in, we're going through, we're fighting the guard scorpion and obviously we fall for the translation error where it tells you to attack while the tail is up, which is a huge mistake. But anyway, we get through that part and she finishes the bombing mission and we're both like, we just beat the first disc of this game, <laughs> not knowing how much more we actually had to go. So eventually over time, my sister would stop playing games and I started to pick up the games more on my own. And I decided one day, grab Final Fantasy VII and I put it in and I started from the very beginning and I left the character names alone. I didn't want to change them. I wanted to just kind of play through this game and see what it was. And I was not prepared for the adventure that I was going to go on. <laughs> this is a game that completely changed me at the time I played it. I remember one of the first things that stuck out to me was the music. Just hearing how different it sounded and how it sounded so epic like a movie, you know, and the game itself felt like I was playing through a movie. And I remember beating the bombing run mission and just progressing further and further and further into this game and learning about the characters and realizing that games can be so much more than what I thought they were because these were fully fleshed out characters that had backstories and depth to them and development. And you found yourself starting to care for them. And, you know, I remember experiencing all the highs and lows of that game. And obviously one of the lowest parts of that game is when you, spoiler alert, lose Aerith and she dies. And I probably may have been too young to experience this <laughs> being seven years old, but I remember everything about that day when I reached the point where Aerith dies. I remember what I was wearing. I remember what the weather was like. I remember what TV I was playing on. I remember all of that stuff. I remember frame by frame of that scene and how it affected me. And I remember bawling my eyes out. And to this day, I cannot listen to Aerith's theme without getting a little teary because it just immediately takes me back to that point in time when you lose her. And imagine a seven-year-old kid crying his eyes out and then the, the devs <laughs> expect you to go through with a boss fight because immediately after she dies you have to do a boss battle with one of the Genova creatures so that was kind of hard for me to get through at the time and I remember I had to pause the game try and collect my thoughts which was not going to happen and I unpause and I'm just sobbing my eyes out trying to pick what attack I want to use and <laughs> it just left a mark on me as a kid that I will never ever forget and that game just became so special to me playing it more and more and eventually reaching the end and finishing 
playing it and just being so blown away at what I had experienced, you know, the music, the gameplay, the the villain Sephiroth being so frightening as a kid and, and doing all these side quests and learning about materia and I'll never forget the first time I hopped into that submarine and went into the ocean and saw this really dark shadowy gigantic figure just swimming near the ocean floor and feeling just absolute dread and terror because I did not know what it was in that water. You know there's a lot of things that that game really helped me with at such a young age in particular reading comprehension which at that age I think I might have been in second or third grade at the time but I was reading at my reading comprehension and reading level were leaps and bounds above the other kids in school because I was playing this game and the game itself is all reading. You have to read to get through the game. So that game alone, I, I really credit to like my reading skills and comprehension being as good as they were at the time. And then learning about critical thinking and how you plan out your battles and what to equip your characters with and where to travel to. So there was a lot of things about that game that just kind of helped me develop as a kid and maybe develop a little bit faster than I should have <laughs> in certain areas. But finishing seven, I believe it might have been a year or two later when Final Fantasy VIII came out and my mom let me get that and I remember taking it home because I was so excited to see how different it was going to be from seven and I fell in love with that game and then nine would come out and then ten you would come out and ten was the one that was next gen and had voice acting it was completely different and it was a really exciting time so it's pretty crazy to think about how one game in particular can get you into a franchise that you would then love as a whole. It's almost kind of like a Doctor Who situation where everyone has their favorite doctor, who is the doctor they love, and then everyone has their first doctor, who is the doctor that was the doctor at the time that they were introduced to with the show. So for me, my favorite doctor would definitely be Peter Capaldi, but at the time I got introduced to the show, David Tennant was the doctor. So it's kind of like one of those situations, but you kind of love it all no matter what. So, and seeing everyone's overall excitement and happiness happiness and just overwhelming amount of joy for the announcement and eventual release of Final Fantasy VII Remake just further drives home the point of how influential and important the original Final Fantasy VII still is to this day. And it's pretty crazy to think that a lot of us would probably be different people nowadays if we had never played the original Final Fantasy VII to begin with. So that's the video guys. I am Curious Corduroy. Uh, I would actually love to hear your guys' journey with Final Fantasy VII. So leave that in the comments down below. How did you get introduced to this game? What was your age? What was your first experience? How did it change your perception of gaming? I would really love to hear that. So please leave all of that information in the comments down below. I think it'd be really cool if we could all just share our stories with one another with how this game really affected us. So I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.